What is this, amateur hour? I'm blacker than the ace of spades and more militant than you and your whole damn army put together. While you out there chanting that rally, browbeating politicians, I'm taking out any money from the sucker on the humble that gets in my way. So I'll tell you what. When your so-called revolution starts, you call me, and I'll be right down front showing you how it's done. But until then, you need to shut the fuck up when grown folks is talking. Now can you dig it? Ladies, gentlemen, and scholars, the world's first quantum powered podcast live from the Daddy Juice Energy Studio in the Beat Curtain District, your star players, Gemini Jackson, the Burrito Bandito, and Arthur Dude. Welcome, welcome, ladies, gentlemen, of course, you scholars. I'm your fearless and greasy host, Gemini Jackson, someone of the quantum with our resident hyena, Arthur Dude. Howdy, ninjas. The Burrito Bandito joins us from Slam City South on the other side of Glory Hole. Now let's get this party started with... Double X Quantimino. So there's right. a new movie trailer out. Preface. For Godzilla vs. Kong. Screonk. Screonk vs. Trionk. That's what they <laughs> should have called it. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, okay, tell us about it. I mean, did everybody see the trailer? I did not. You did not. You didn't yes. hear homework. I can you imagine didn't. what it is, though. No, you uh, can't. Actually, I played maybe no. the first 30 no. seconds. Okay, so, Burrito, give us your impressions of the trailer. Well... It looks totally bonkers. Like, it looks ridiculous. I don't remember Kong being that big when, when uh, what was it, uh, the first Jack Kong movie Black. came out? You know what I mean? Was he in that one? I don't know. I believe so. We're talking about American modern Yeah, we're talking Kong. about uh, Jumanji, right? Like the one that the no, sequel no, no, was no. Kong Skull Island? Yeah, Skull Island. I think that, that was Jack Black. This is the Kong from that movie. Yeah, Jack Black. Is it Jack Black in there? I think he is. Do you know the production company or the director of this movie, Godzilla vs. Kong? It's the same. It's the legendary universe that's doing this. And the director, any, is it the Kong I, director? Nah, I don't know who the director Shinji Toshiishi. Did the Rage Against the Machine Godzilla from 2000? Yeah, the uh, Matthew Broderick 1998 Godzilla. <laughs> no, Godzilla 2000. That was 2000. Yeah, that's the Matthew one that Broderick. the Cashmere song in there. Was that the one that has Jean Reno and they were chewing bubblegum? No, that's Independence Day. He's in the Broderick Godzilla. I know he is, but he doesn't do the chewing gum thing. That was Independence Day. Is it? Yeah, when they're trying to get on base no. and they're all... Is that Godzilla? Yeah, because he's pretending to be uh, an American. That's right. Okay, so it was Godzilla. Yeah. And Jean Reno is not in Independence Day. So this is the legendary no. <laughs> pictures Godzilla in yes. Godzilla vs. Kong. Like they've used, They've done a Godzilla movie before? They've done two Godzilla movies before. Two, fool. All right. This recent one was them, the, the right? The Brian Cranston yeah. one? The trilogy, yeah. So there's the Brian Cranston was the first one. And then the most recent one was Godzilla King of Monsters, where it had Mothra and Rodan and Ghidorah, King Ghidorah, isn't it? And the third one is the third and final one is going to be Godzilla versus Kong where it's Kong from Skull Island. Like, they're all in the shared universe. Like, oh, this all happens in the same in the same Earth. So King Kong wins then? Uh, I mean... It's the end of the trilogy. In, the, tra- the, in the trailer, they make it seem... Like it's a draw? Has this battle taken place before? This has taken place before. In 1962, in King Kong versus Godzilla. Who won? There's a little bit of a controversy there. Oh, no. Tell us about uh, it. Screonk versus Treonk. So, this is the thriller in Manila. So in the Japanese version, uh-huh. at the end, when they're fighting, they both fall into the ocean. Oh, no. And Kong reemerges and Godzilla doesn't. Godzilla can but swim. The Japanese, yeah, the, the Japanese defense forces say things like, oh, I bet Godzilla is probably still alive. And... Uh, as the credits are rolling, you hear, you know, the, the Godzilla roar. Yeah, indicating that, you know, he's still he's gonna be back or whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. In the American version that was released a year later, because they used to do different versions for the American and Japanese release, and sometimes they would add things and take things away. They would take out Is this the same film, just a different edit and an overdub? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah. they would change the whole context sometimes. And, like Mighty so, yeah, Morphin so Power this, in, in the American version, 
they, everything happens the same way. They go over the cliff, but there's no talk of Godzilla being alive. Right. And the roar you hear afterwards is is only Kong's roar. Ooh. Um, is this going so, over the cliff like Thelma uh, and Louise? Are they holding hands in a convertible? They are not. No. They can't drive. Yeah, they're, they're monsters. They can't fit inside <laughs> the cars. You need to sit your little All right, so I saw the trailer, too. Yeah. Here are my impressions. The movie's going to be fucking terrible from a, <laughs> a dialogue-driven standpoint. Oh, yeah. Action and shit, it's going to be fucking on. But, like, the way they were talking in that trailer, it, just, it hurts so bad. Bullshit! It hurts so bad. And then I have, like... It's kind of the way all of them are. The whole premise is... Well, I, I haven't seen any other ones, so... The whole premise oh, is, is like, they have Kong on, like, Tapper and shit, and they have this, like, child that, like, yeah. like King Kong likes... King Kong don't like shit except Fay Ray. Is that Fay Ray's child? I feel like they're taking the Mothra approach. You know how Mothra had the little Shobijin, the little no. the little tiny girls? Nope. Don't know that. Oh. There's like these little little like maybe two, three inch tall twins from an island. And they're they like They were literally two, three inches tall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've never seen the oh yeah, they're they're in the original in the the last Godzilla movie, the Godzilla King of Monsters, they were full sized people. Boo, boo! Yeah, no. That's why Mothra lost. They didn't take any chances. Yeah. No, I, I, th- I think the dialogue is always takes a backseat in Godzilla movies. It doesn't have to, and, though. Do you know what I mean? I just kind of gloss over it. It doesn't yeah. have to. It doesn't have to. They they could make it a really interesting story. But also, they don't have but they to. Don't. You know, there's that side of the coin, too. It doesn't have to be bad dialogue, but it also doesn't have to be good dialogue. How was the dialogue in the first two Legendary Pictures Godzilla movies? Mm, Not great either. One of the big criticisms of the first one was that they didn't see enough of the monsters fighting. Yeah, because that's expensive. There was too much focus on the the people. You have to have literal armies of people to corral these monsters. It's a it's a lot of crew expense. Monsters eat a lot of food. I didn't think it was yeah crafty for monsters. Come on, fuck out of here! You got to feed them humans. I don't know what the rate on human is. Maybe it's close to the rate on long pig. Long pig. The big not so secret secret for secret, Godzilla secret, versus Kong a secret. is that there's probably going to be an appearance by Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, they showed him in the trailer. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I mean, Go they kind of. Did you see the extended trailer? No, I just saw the regular ass one. There's like this red thing with like shiny shit. No, there's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go back and watch it, man. I'll show you. I'll show you screen grabs. <laughs> Sexy ass tail. Bullshit. That first, there's like that very first scene where it looks like there's Mechagodzilla flying, but and he's not shiny. Like I see the still. Fuck, you see a big old oh. fucking shiny dick. Just go across the screen, <laughs> <laughs> and it's off screen. <laughs> one zero one zero one. Like halfway through, they also kind of show some schematics where you're like, "Oh, I kind of see some some mecha feet." Uh oh, mecha Godzilla. That's feet. what you saw. You That's saw some you mecha, saw was a mecha feet. feet. You didn't even see mecha Godzilla. Nope. Just his feet. No, nope, not dong. Nothing. Feet. <laughs> mecha Godzilla feet. Not well, focus on. Should I watch the other two before watching this one? You do not have to to enjoy so. this one. I think maybe that's yeah. why they keep the dialogue <laughs> kind of like, you know, these aren't really trilogies. These aren't really like epic storylines that need six hours to be told. These are like the hit second pieces one, each. You can the only watch thing them that, separately. That, that, that the first and second one was the fact that it was the same Godzilla. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No but genre. None of, the, no. none of the characters are the same. No genre. No. Well, I mean, I guess there are. But it's it's only like one main character, Sarazawa. I think Sarazawa was the first one. But no, there's there's no like real connective tissue between the first and second one. Now, what's her name? Millie Brown. Is that her name? Millie Bobby Thir- Brown. Thirteen. Millie Bobby Brown. Millie Bobby ah, Brown. Millie. Stranger Things. Yeah. Oh wait, for real? Yeah, Stranger Things. Yeah, she's in both. I saw her in the trailer, and so Should she's in the I second one. Should I watch Stranger Things um, before so I, don't know I watch how... Godzilla? <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I've only seen the first season, which is good. Is it worth watching right now? No, you have to wait till Halloween. Yeah. I'm watching Midnight Diner. That's a slow show. Hell yeah, I love it. It's, it's like so a much, bedtime show. There's so much space to it. Midnight Diner, recommended. Recommended over Stranger Things? Probably. Have you seen that burrito? I've never heard of Mid- Midnight Diner. This Man, has nothing so to do with Godzilla or 
thrillers. It's Japanese. Oh, is it? There's nothing thrilling, though. No, it's so slow. It's a slow burn show. So good. It's about a guy that he has a ramen house or something. Yeah, he runs a diner, and like the, his policy is he'll cook you anything as long as he has the ingredients for it. So people come in and like ask for different dishes, and it kind of correlates to the story that they're going to tell. Of why he has just certain ingredients? No, of the person who at- orders that food. Oh, so, so each like, episode is about a, a different person who comes to his diner. So if I went in there and asked for a McRib. Right. He'd be like, I owe. <laughs> That's what oh. he says when he says, yeah, I can, I'll go ahead. And I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I got you is what I owe means. <laughs> so back to this Godzilla yeah. versus Kong. Back to the interesting monster fighting story. So you're looking forward to this burrito? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Are you going in with high expectations? I don't expect it to be a deep Godzilla film because the last two were not deep Godzilla. Would you prefer a deep Godzilla film? Um, I mean, if they could recreate some of the gravity of the first one, that would be cool. I think Shin Godzilla gets close to that. Tell me about Shin Godzilla. Is he black? No, but he's he's very scary and crusty. What's the Shin in Shin Godzilla mean? Death. Yeah. Shin is death. It's like the opposite, yeah. right? It's like Bizarro Superman, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, kind of. That's a really good analogy to Shin Godzilla, to all the other Godzillas. And there's different forms, too. Like, you see his Godzilla's transformation through these different... It's almost like he's going through like a metamorphosis. So at yeah. the beginning, he's really ugly, kind of no-armed lizard creature and then he kind of grows up a little bit and he's this kind of bigger junior Godzilla and then you know he goes through another kind of transformation and he becomes this red and black just scarred kind of kind emotionally of thing. yes emotionally he, and he wears it on his skin very well Godzilla is a cutter <laughs> you should watch Shin Godzilla it's pretty good all right so that's a standalone yeah. movie yes it's Japanese yeah so one of the original ones or earlier Godzilla movie. No, it's recent. Oh, wow. yeah, it's last yeah no, it, it's really good. What? So is this a new idea or an old idea? Shin, Shin Godzilla? Godzilla is uh, Hideki Anno. So that means new? The the guy who did <laughs> uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. <laughs> so yeah, it's a new idea. Yeah, new idea. Like, it's yeah. not part of the original 60s Godzilla universe. They just expanded on it and made it Shiniverse. Oh, made a standalone well, new Godzilla movie based on a new character. I mean, there's been a few reboots of the Godzilla universe throughout right. the years. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew Broderick. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, I mean, like. The Breaking Bad Godzilla. There's, there's different uh, eras, I guess. So, yes to Godzilla versus Kong. Let's hope it's not a Wonder Woman 1984. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's hope that they, they do it right. Speaking of Wonder Women. Oh, yes. Tell me about this. Resident Evil Village 8-Foot Vampire Lady. True or false? Yeah. True or false, first off. True. True. So we need to see a picture of this. I didn't see a picture of this. Did I miss something? I so think so. She's an 8-Foot Vampire with like yeah. J's. Like double J T's. All right. All right. So like Lady <laughs> Death? I think her name is supposed to be Lady... Dimitrescu? Eight foot vampire lady. Did you pull her up already, Art? No, I did not. Was I supposed to? You don't have to. You know the premise you of her. You gotta yeah. see what she looks like. So you're yeah. saying Jays. Like, like these are insane. Wearing some no, Jordan not, not Jordans, not oh. Jordans. Like her titty size is Jays. <laughs> okay. They're like shelves. <laughs> Worth typing. Shelves? Shelves. Like I could put my Encyclopedia Britannica on like, them? In order to defeat her. You have to get up close so that she loses line of sight of you underneath her titties. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you defeat the level. I feel like that's how that's you defeat a her. Good strategy. You got to get underneath them titties, and then maybe you don't want to leave though. You know. <laughs> okay. I think my favorite part though has been all the memes. All the memes and all the not safe for work anime clips. Uh, you know I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Just a character up Twitter in the and you're game. Like, oh shit! Yeah. There's a game called Resident <laughs> Evil Village. And there's a vampire yeah. lady in there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And this is on like PS5, so it looks crazy good. People talking about her, but I also hear they might be sleeping on the daughter. She might be even crazy. Oh, yeah. She got crazy eyes. She's yeah. regular size, right? I don't know. I didn't see like a, a scale. Sized? Oh, yeah, me either. I think she's regular sized. Everything I've seen them both in, 
the dicks are massive, so <laughs> it's hard to gauge. It's hard to gauge like scale. <laughs> so vampire lady, true, true. Mighty, mighty, mighty boss tones. Is that true? Three mighties. Two mighties. It says three. Bad cunt taste. Gotcha. Mighty, oh, mighty, mighty. I got it. No, the song is mighty. Ah. It's a mighty song, so it's a mighty, mighty, mighty boss tone song. Got you. They released a song featuring members of Rancid, Fishbone, Interrupters, Specials, and more. Arthur, give us the scoop. Also, has less than Jake, Dancehall Crashers, Big D, I think, and the kids' table, but maybe just Big D. <laughs> Suicide Machines, Murphy's Law, Bim, Scala, Bim, Bucko Nine, and the Pie Tasters, Kamuri, and the list goes on and on, but it's an eight minute song. Kind of has that medley feel to it, like uh, by no effects. The decline. There are some verses, like there's a verse that the interrupters do, but opens with Dickie Bear. You know, it's very ska, supposed <clears throat> ska revival coming through. I feel it. I, I called it, didn't I? I said ska's coming back. He did. My favorite or most surprising, I guess, Cameo? guest mm-hmm. yeah, was uh, Felipe Galvan. From Los Canales. Whoa, they got the Scarnales on there? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Multicultural. And they scored Ska name. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not hard. You can put Ska names into anything. Let's make one up. <laughs> Give me a g- Godzilla Ska. Uh, double X Squatimino. Uh, <laughs> double X Squatimino. Yeah. Squatimino. Scazilla. Scazilla. I mean, that's how it would that's be. That's the obvious one. That's the only way to go. Or you could go God. You can't do anywhere else, huh? It would God have Scala to be, or something. Mm, it would have to be Scazilla. Scazilla. How about Scaronk? <laughs> Scaronk. Is that stretched? A little bit. A little hard. All right. Sorry. Anyway, so they have so many features on this song. Yeah. And guess what they do to get all these features in an eight-minute song? They each have like 30 seconds and then just plug them all together. That'd be logical, but they do something else. Mm-mm. Oh, they all sing together like We Are The there World? Lame! They do the Who anthem. Who gives a shit? They just get everyone to. <laughs> so it's just like it's just a mighty mighty Boston song, and then the people come in with an anthem. You know the bruise by No Effects. Yeah, and I'm sure there's like hey, do, do, all their friends and everyone. Bruise. Yeah, singing on that chorus. And that's it. And that's what they're doing in the oh, song. Oh man, not that that's a bad thing. I mean, it's this a good song. This is what they song. have. Like Dicky Bear is like, hey, uh, I'm making this song. Can you uh, give me a lyric? Is Dicky Bear played by Cookie Monster? Cookie Monster. <laughs> I'm Cookie Monster Bear. <laughs> Never had a better knock on wood. I can't do a good Dickie Barrett, okay? Nobody can except for Dickie Barrett. This is what we have to deal with. Dickie Barrett here. Um, Actually, it's kind of like um, Louis Armstrong. Yeah. What is this, amateur hour? I see these guys. Hello. I would have Boston's cover of that song. What a wonderful It would sound role. exactly the same. <laughs> but Scott out. You got yeah. some horns. So he's just like, hey, can you sing this lyric? Record it on your iPhone and send it to me, and I'll mix it in. That's all he did. Yeah, probably. That's all he did. Or just from their home studios and send them the, the track, and they'll mix it in. Man, it would have been cooler if they had, like, you know, they mixed in the drum parts. Because each ska drummer has their own ska sounds, and they have their own fills and shit, you know? Where it's, like, the same beat, right? But then they have, like, you know, ten different drummers, and they no, just, I, like... I think we, it's we, just we all boss in. tones. I know it is! I'm saying what I what I think would be cool to do. And then you have different horn players and stuff, and you ensemble those, you know what I mean? Like a super group? No, just like everybody gives you the, like they play the song their way, and then you take pieces, and you mix them all together. That could be a mess. Yeah, a beautiful mess. (laughs) That's what it'll be called. All right, final topic. Animation cells, the cells from hells. Animation cells. Back in the day, they used to hand paint cells. True or false? True. Waste of time, true. true or false? False. True. Why do you say that's a waste of time? I'm just joking. Back in the day, we, they would have to paint these bitches. It, it was an art form. And we want to know, what cells would you grab? I'll go first to warm everyone up. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. I've actually sought after some of them. From the animated series, obviously. Obviously, the 89 animated series. Obviously. Mm-hmm. What and- do they go for? They could go for hundreds of dollars. It really Jesus. depends on who's in the cell. Baxter and Stockman. How they're all positioned in the cell. Baxter Stockman. 
What does that sell go for? I mean, if it was Baxter Stockman with some Ninja Turtles in it, it'd be just as expensive. It'd probably be more expensive because he's not in every episode. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But it's one of those things you have more turtles in the cell. It's more valuable. And then how's everyone standing? Right. And yeah, who else would be in there? Like if they were fighting Shredder, that'd be a really Uh, iconic cell to have. And you know, when it comes to like the tweening, they could all look weird in that freeze frame. Right. So... Mm-hmm. Why would you want that? And you're seeing this freeze frame of them in kind of like an awkward position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's the ones where it's almost like their position on the cell. Um, right. Another good cell or cell animation to get is like He-Man. That'd be mm-hmm. good. Masters of the Universe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And That'd be cool. Yeah. Anything of that genre of. The, I mean, like the late 80s animation. I would want Centurions. Scooby-Doo. Ah, Scooby-Doo. Yeah, that's Obviously. a good one. Yeah, I got and, and the classic Scooby Doo, right? Not any of that modern, not stuff. scrappy. I mean, scrappy. No, they scrappy. probably give you to, they pay you money to take away. <laughs> you know, they dumped those souls a long no, time the, ago. The original Sco- Scooby Doo, yeah. You could just cut around Scrappy Doo. I'd love to get some of the villains. That'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty fun to like frame them all and have them like or the unmasked, yeah. like the unmasked. <laughs> the Dude, unmasked that's scene probably. Scene? That's probably the most expensive cells. I would have gotten would away cool. with it. Yeah. If you had each like villain unmasked, dang, that would be cool. <laughs> if it wasn't for these meddling kids. Yeah, that'd be a cool little. That's a Scooby-Doo room. All right. I got the ultimate cell. All right. Lion King. Wow. The one where Rafiki's holding up nope. Simba? Nope. Oh, when um, Simba oh, pounces no. on the <laughs> mountain and the, it spells out sex and like Yo, petals that's what's up. or whatever. I bet that cell goes for a million dollars. Well, they're not selling their cells. I know they're Disney not selling their cells. They just them in a vault and they like, just burn remasters them. them. They just melt their cells down. But if that's that would be the highest sell. You think they melt their cells down? No, no way. I think they nah, keep they them in some cryogenic them. vault of some sort. I, oh, like right next to Disney's head? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Disney's not even on the top shelf. But yeah, that'd be a, a good sell. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I would echo yours. The uh, late 80s animation stuff's always been really cool. So we're bringing up animation cells because Collector Burrito is in search of, or why are we even talking about this? Oh. We, we were talking about Peter Pan earlier. And you just brought up, it'd be cool to... Yeah, I was just like, oh, you know, it'd be cool to... To, no, yeah, we uh, were you know, talking about it was such an art form. You yeah, know, it'd be cool to have some of those, some of those cells, and yeah, that's we how just, that's how the topic got started. We were saying that it's hard to tell that Peter Pan was made in 1953. Yeah, oh yeah, that's what it was. And yeah. we were like, that's because you know they used they. I mean, they painted all this shit, and it was an actual art form and stuff like that. And like, oh, how cool would it be to have basically a painting? You know. And nowadays we're seeing remastered it versions. Makes it look good. Was to actually put effort into the painting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I make this shit look good. That was Double X Quantimino. Julio Teas, financial advisors. When you gotta move some weight, why wait? Julio will help you the first of holdings. Flat leg. Always great. Julio gets it done. Call Julio Teas today. I regret it tomorrow. Julio Tejas. This is the news. Can I start something off real quick? Go ahead, Gemini yeah. Jackson. So, it's your show. I don't know if we had. I don't know if we have this a new segment, but uh, Reddit's been blowing up the stock market. You guys hear about that? Oh, you're talking <laughs> about GameStop? <laughs> yeah. yeah, GameStop. They've been blowing up the Breaking meme stocks. News. Yeah, this is awesome yeah. stuff. So and let's say I was thinking, living no, under a rock, Gemini Jackson. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say I've been living under a rock. What's right. going on? All right, so this is a big epic battle between hedge funds and the little man. So all these hedge funds said that GameStop is overvalued and will go down. So what they do is they buy positions to where Bullshit! they make money if the stock goes down, basically. Right. Reddit's like, what do you nah, call those traders? There's a short certain, sellers. Yeah, okay. Short, yeah. Shorties, basically. They Reddit, the Reddit, <laughs> Reddit believed in the stock, right? And they bought it. And they're like, you know what? Fuck it. Keep buying it. We'll make sure that these short sellers lose money. So if they never sell their Your stocks, ass. if they hold their stocks, 
like the short sellers, they borrow a bunch of money to buy these stocks at the whatever price, blah, blah, blah. They're going to be out billions of dollars if this holds. Wall Street's shutting down, trading on GameStop. And now Robinhood's like, hey, we're not letting you, we're not letting you buy any GameStop. But you can sell all the GameStop you have. So they're trying, everything's trying to get the short to go. But they're not going, <laughs> man. It's like at $300 now. Anyway, that got me thinking. I should run ads for Julio Tejas Financial Advisors. <laughs> hey, Robin Hood fucking you in the butt. <laughs> Julio Tejas. I'll move that weight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty messed up. I mean, yeah. why are they changing the rules? You know what I mean? Yeah. Be- yeah. What is it? Like, hey, hedge funds, you can play this, the stock market like a casino, but we can't. No, fuck that. It's awesome, man. But they're talking about how this is going to like lead to catastrophic financial disasters. I'm like, let it happen. Fuck it. <laughs> let it happen. <laughs> that was the burn. breaking news. This is the rest of the news. An Essex academic's imposter copied work and his tattoos. So there's a British lecturer who says there's a student in the U.S. who copied his work and adopted his identity at conferences. But he went so far as to actually copy the guy's tattoos, get them tattooed on him so that people would really think, oh, this is actually the guy. Why not? That's creepy. It is creepy. But I mean, how creepy? It's kind of like when someone's inspired by, say, a musician or an actor and just wants to look and be like them. Yeah. But this is just like another, like a, but a like professor. He, this guy's getting obviously getting this dude's runoff, right? No, he's like, just he's a gotten, straight up copycat. No, but he's gotten speaking gigs. Oh, yeah? It's that far of an imposter? I think so. I think I read the story. And I think it was like, that's how he found out that the guy's impersonating him. I might be inventing the news. But so be it. He found out that he was being impersonated. He's like, wait, I was never at an Idaho conference. How much did you pay him? Yeah. $10,000. What the fuck? No. No. <laughs> was the imposter no. using his name too? Yeah, he was impersonating oh, him all the okay. way. Yeah. His name is Ted yeah. and his dick size. So that's straight up creepy. I guess it's a little creepy, but it feels more like, I feel like he was like doing it to, like as a fraud. To make money. To benefit right? off this other guy's identity? Yeah, but not like yeah. because he Maybe like, like to get sexualizes door, and washes right? up him. That's like, what I thought the story was about. Yeah, that's what. That's not what I think it is. I think it's like, hey, this is money Bullshit. grab. This isn't like some weird sexual fetish. But it might nah. be. <laughs> At least he didn't steal his real skin. Not yet. <laughs> Speaking of stealing <laughs> skin, confused, jealous wife stabs husband. After seeing her younger self in old photos. Bullshit! <laughs> God damn. <laughs> a woman who apparently didn't recognize herself in an old photo stabbed her husband when she suspected an affair. Who the fuck is oh, this bitch? bitch? It's you, hon. Stab, nah. stab, stab. You lie to me? Stab, 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 stab. I don't look that good. Stab, 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 stab. Baby, I wish you didn't have dementia. Oh. <laughs> oh, she had dementia? I don't know. She was older, I think. That's crazy, man. Yeah, man. I Can you up. imagine? I swear to God, it's you. Look, I'm younger, too, in that fucking picture. What the hell? Nah, stab, stab, stab. Rare U.S. gold coin dating from 1787 sold for $9 million. Ooh. The Brasher doubloon was sold as part of an auction of U.S. coins in Dallas. What do you think about this, Art? So the country was founded in 1776, right? Yeah. And about this time, the 1787 was about the time when, like currency and stuff was finally established yeah and you'll see coins from this era always they're always expensive especially in higher grades and And i'm sure this rare gold coin was in a high grade i'm also wondering like how many are the the population of this type of coin in this condition it's probably ultra rare it may be the only one it could be for a nine million dollar price tag i feel like to justify over a million dollars on a currency Right. It has to be super unique. This is just like, you yeah. know, precious stone or some sort of very rare collector's item. There's the people that can afford these kind of things and maybe they've been chasing it all their life or they're an investor. And this is one of those items that it's like buying masterpiece art. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it's like buying a bunch of shares at GameStop. Exactly. And holding them. And then Robin Hood stops you in your tracks. <laughs> Man, that's shitty. I actually saw it's kind of a little update story. We didn't Uh-oh. get it in here, but Uh-oh. I saw that the twenty dollar bill with the sticker on it eventually sold. Oh, yeah? got like four hundred thousand. 
Like four hundred thousand dollars. Whoa, that's yeah. way more than they thought it was going to sell for, right? They st- they're calling like fifty, sixty, something like that, sixty nine. So this was a note from nineteen ninety six, and it, it went had for four twenty. Chiquita huh? banana sticker on it. Nope, Del Monte. Yeah, bitch. A Del Monte. No, Del Monte. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a doll. <laughs> It was not Dole. Dole, Dole don't make bananas. And so the sticker was on the paper after it printed the first run, and then they were putting the seals and the serial numbers on there and right. printed on top of the sticker. Right. So mm-hmm. you can tell that you can't really fake this. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. And it's one of a kind, so that's $400,000. $400,000. Is that a, that's like a $20,000 multiplier on its face value. <laughs> bong, bong. McDonald's customer, enraged as delivery boy cancels order, eats it outside her home. Is it? <laughs> I saw You're this. The pictures really make it. Yeah. Sorry. Great, great for radio. No, go for it, man. Tell us all about these pictures. Yeah. I'm <laughs> imagining these pictures right now. It's like a picture from maybe like a, a, a balcony camera? or something. Like looking down, and on the other side of this this hedge on the street, there you see the delivery driver, and he's sitting down with his back to the the, the person taking the picture, and he's just like chowing down on this the McDonald's order. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like so right outside egregious. the house. He's like, you know what? No. Yeah, exactly. See, this I was gonna say, mine. I was gonna say, uh, gotten her food stolen before. Oh, really? Yeah, from like a a delivery service. Where like they'll just they'll go pick it up and then they'll just go home and then you know that's it like you don't get your food obviously you get your money back but you're still hungry right yeah Bullshit. yeah and then that person gets the food because I mean these are like sixteen year old kids and they're like you know doing favor or whatever and they're like I don't yeah. give a fuck I'm just it's gonna... not a serious job there isn't a whole lot of yeah consequences. there's no consequence for this free meal they'll just do it once and then say fuck it it doesn't come out of their pay or whatever what do they care they're not getting paid it's a gig. Yeah, I mean, like, they'll only get that $2 if they deliver that food, right? Uh, okay, but okay. they could have a $9 meal. In That's the true. Expense you know of what the I mean? Companies. At the expense of the companies, and then, like, obviously they're not going to get another gig, but they don't give a shit. It's yeah. another phone number and another... <laughs> uh, anyway, but never this egregious. Like, this guy went all the way to the house saying, nah, I'm too hungry for this shit. And then just chows down on McDonald's. Like, I already got it. Fuck it. You are a smelly pirate hooker. Maybe he forgot what he was doing. And he got all the way there. He's like, man, this is a long walk. I'm not going to so make it hungry. home. Maybe I'm not going to make it home yeah. if I don't eat it. If I don't eat something, I'm not going to make it home. What do you think she ordered? From McDonald's? Yeah. Probably double McRib. A double McRib? A double McRib. So to make a double McRib, you put the bread in the middle. Easy. You need two McRibs, though. That's why it's called double McRib. Ooh. The McRib is now the meat, the bun, and the meat is the bread. Is this why they only offer it at certain times of the year? No, it's a permanent menu item now, man. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How about this other guy? The last guy. Georgia man charged with scamming nearly $1 million from a grocery store. Bullshit! So this guy worked at the grocery store, and he was returning items. Right. And he was like dispersing them out into credit cards or whatever, like gift cards, gift cards, credit cards. Like you can put it back on someone else's credit card and then the chargeback goes like on their statement or something. They'll get dispersed later, blah, blah, blah. I see. Anyway, he did it to the tune of a million dollars. The thing is, some of these items that he was charging back, one of them was like seventy seven thousand dollars. One item. What is this? Amateur hour. So you can just enter the value in there? I guess so. And he took Kroger's for a million bucks, man. And he bought cars. <laughs> I think he was Ooh. only there for like a few and weeks. Clothes. too. Jesus. And guns. Like he was there for a few weeks. Who gives somebody this much power? And no, no one noticed? I mean, somebody eventually A million did. dollars later, someone noticed. Yeah. And I mean, like, the thing is, it's like, legit, if they're never going to get that money back, it, unless he had it like in a bank account or something, right? Like if he cashed it out, if he took it into like, into if he made you know and then he bought shit they're not going to get nearly the value back you can't get that million bucks back what kind of car do you think you bought or cars um two dodge neons a civic type r right a uh, ford ranger ford ranger <laughs> <laughs> ford fucking ranger a ford fucking ranger and uh jewelry you know uh, yeah i mean that's enough cars for a million bucks you also bought guns Yes. What kind of guns do you think you bought? Glocks. 
Some super soakers. Super soakers. Yeah. <laughs> it's nerf or nothing, baby. <laughs> it's nerf or nothing. You there can you get go. a lot of nerf guns for a million bucks, dude. Dynamite. Dynamite. We move on to Burritos Nippon News. You know, Slam Citizens, Burritos always dreamed of being a Japanese sumo wrestler, despite not being Japanese and only moderately good at making large pizza into personal pizza. Forced to live his dream fire carelessly through the internet, this is Burritos Nippon News. Segment, segment within a segment. Within a segment. Oh, within a segment. I always forget who's supposed to go first. <laughs> we didn't talk about it. Uh, so the first news story today... Domino's Pizza now comes with tapioca and dango ball stuffed crust. Okay. What's a dango ball? In Japan, I'll show I have you. no idea what a no, dango dongo, ball like is. The, like they serve them on a stick and they, oh. there's three of them and they're like chewy in the middle. I think it's just some ball of mochi. Dango? But deep fried. I think so it's, it's crispy fried. on the so outside. It's crispy on the outside, chewy in the middle. So it's like a rice ball. But it's like sticky rice. Yeah, and they put them on sticks. Isn't there an emoji that looks like that? Yes. Is that what a dango ball is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dango so Unchained. Says, um, I'm oh. going to make a restaurant called Dango <laughs> Unchained. What do y'all think? And instead of on a skewer, it's like on it's on toothpicks, like takoyaki. I like it. It could work. So this reminded me, though, of White Vans Cam. The, the everything. Yes. Right? Yes. Like... I mean, it's not the everything because it doesn't have everything. Right. It doesn't have everything, but, but it's got a lot of shit. So let's go through yeah, this again. It has like, that crust. And what else is going on with this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me read it here. As it has a few crust stuffings on offer, namely oh. mozzarella, cream cheese, and cheddar cheese, and a pearl heart, which contains brown sugar, tapioca, and shiratama dumplings. Okay, so I thought all of this shit together was in one crust. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know these were options. Now, well, well, the 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 tapioca and the so so the bubble yeah, balls the last and, one is, and, and and the dango is is in the crust. It's stuffed crust. Yeah. What do you think? Would you try it? I would try it. How do you think it'll taste? I mean, is it sweet? Maybe. I think like, the maybe texture like would be kind of cool. Maybe sweet and salty. I mean, I like sweet and salty. Yeah. But I mean, yes. like, on your pizza, though, you know what I mean? I mean, like, yeah, say, I guess so. I like Hawaiian pizzas. Yeah. But this ain't Hawaiian pizza. This is like... That's sweet and salty. Like, say somebody put a, a, a cookie. Like a cookie crust? Like a chocolate chip cookie crust? Yeah. Maybe. If I was just going to have, you know... Eat the slice first, then save the crust for later. <laughs> like so, a graham cracker crust? No, man, like a like a fucking key lime pie. But it's a <laughs> key lime pizza. <laughs> key lime pizza. I, I would try it. I mean, I think it was yeah. it's more of a texture thing. I think the texture would be kind of nice on the uh, like a chewier crust. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? So we'll give it the pass, but I don't know about this. From one sweet, savory food to another, they're releasing uh, two types of chocolate ramen. Are going to make uh, Valentine's Day extra sweet. Extra oh. sweet. <laughs> chocolate ramen. Tell me all about it. For Valentine's Day, Korakuen, which is a, a ramen chain in Japan, is uh, going to start serving two kinds. One of them is going to be like the dark chocolate, um, and the other one's going to be white chocolate. See, the the first one is, well, how are they doing it? Yeah, tell me I about these know. ramen sweets. I mean, is there yeah. soup involved? Yeah, it's a broth. So it's like melted uh, chocolate. And so then the, you put the, the noodles yeah, so in there. The first one is called Devil's Chocolate Ramen. It starts off with the standard soy ramen broth, mm -hmm, which is then mm -hmm. enhanced with cocoa oil. Aside from such familiar toppings as chashu pork and green onion, we got two options here. Uh, one's called the Devil Chocolate Ramen, uh, which is uh, the standard soy ramen broth, and that's going to be enhanced with cocoa oil. Uh, aside from toppings uh, like uh, chashu pork and green onion, and you also get a bar of chocolate and grated ginger. Uh, the second option is called the Angel's White Chocolate Ramen. 
and that's based on the Shio broth. And this time the ingredient list is cooked oil and cream uh, with a white chocolate bar topping and no ginger. Hmm. Which one would you go yeah, for? Yeah, which one would you go for? I don't know. <laughs> Both. Let I me have a little of each. Yeah. What's the serving size? Just a normal bowl of ramen? Because it seems yeah. like that'd be a bit much. You're going to eat well, like a chocolatey well, treat. And I don't know how much, like like in the pictures, like the first one is look like it's chocolate, you know? Like the broth looks like chocolate. But it just has its cocoa oil, but I guess maybe it makes more with enough. Would you eat it if it had Bandmaid's doo-doo butter in it? <laughs> now we're asking the real questions. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't have a I don't have a thing for them that bad. <laughs> I don't like them so much I'm eating their turds. <laughs> Unless it's straight out the butthole. <laughs> so what's going on in outer space? Ooh, I'll tell you what's going on in outer space. Oh, Jesus. Masturbation. Well... <laughs> Not yet, but Japan's Tenga brand wants to create a pocket pussy, flashlight, a rocket pussy, a flashlight, a, a rocket pussy, a yes. rocket pussy, a rocket pussy um, for people to Trademarked. use in outer space. It's going to be the Tenga rocket. So you know, ride the rocket. <laughs> it's a Take joint it venture between Tenga and civilian spaceflight company Interstellar Technologies. Uh, they're going to launch a Tenga rocket into space. But there's some scientific uh, reasons as well. They're going to have some prototypes in there to see what kind of effect space has on their space Tenga. So does Tenga make adult toys? Is this what they're known for? Uh, yeah, they do. They make... Uh, I thought they made apps. Fleshlights. World, words with Ona holes. Yeah. What? Do they make real dolls? Ona holes? Ona holes. That's what they're Ona called. Ona holes? How many Ona yeah. holes do you that's Ona? That's so fucking funny. Because Ona's like, any. like girl. They Lies. just call them Ona holes? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> like donut holes. <laughs> but back. I mean, I guess you could also use a donut. You could just fuck a donut. Just put yeah. it in the microwave 15 seconds. Bon like bon. a Krispy Kreme? No, not Krispy Kreme. A Bismarck? No. Like a Mr. Donut. Like a Mr. Donut. Ooh. So we're talking ring donuts here? That's a different question. We're talking about ponder ring. Maybe a Mrs. Donut. So they're making these flashlights for astronauts? Yes. Or, I don't know, maybe like... Well, astronauts, uh, you know. There's, there's going to be civilian spaceflight yeah. eventually, Yeah, and the right? first thing we need is a pocket pussy, you know? So they're going to have to, you know... Just in case your nuts are feeling heavy, Yeah. here's a Tenga pocket pussy. Well, I think you would unload... Before you got on the spaceship, because I think it's expensive to take things into space. What if they charge you like out on a, by pound? Oh, yeah. Like they got to make it like super light. Yeah. Like out of titanium or something. Yeah. Titanium is not light. <laughs> <laughs> is it light? <laughs> no. But it's got to be durable, man. It's got to be durable. It has to be, it has to survive the rigors of space, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably made of that silicone you use for baking. Maybe. And the last story on Burrito's Neat Bone News. Japanese train conductor flips off a rail fan photographer, which prompts an apology from Japan Railway. Bullshit! So, so somebody has somebody's a fan these guys, of rails. That's what I want to discuss first. Oh, uh, no, of trains. Like, there's you know people who are fans of trains. A tourist. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, the Densha. They just worded it weird. Oh wait, no. There's an otaku. actual like, Densha Otaku. Yeah, that, that's Densha specifically otaku. train. Densha otaku is kind of the, um, the umbrella term. Yeah, like train otaku. Like they're all over Japan. They get really into it. And and it's there's like different those... like categories of people. So some of them are real into like the the, the, the bullet Shinkansen's, trains. And some of them like the the local. Yeah, trains. And, and some of them are yeah really into local trains. Like it's I don't know, like and they the, go around. Why and, like, can't they just be into onas? No, ona holes, train holes. Oh. No, it's like those like yeah. old dudes who build their own train sets. You know. And like the the scenery and all that, and just to watch it go in circles. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like model train cars. Yeah, yeah, model trains. But these are people that like really yeah. are really into like the real trains. Yeah, I mean, it's both weird, true or false. Eh, I like trains. They're cool. It sounds like a hobby, though. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not like, like they're getting weird spotting? about it. They're, yeah, they're not getting weird about you it. You don't know it's that they're really not. Into it. 
uh, I, I mean, like sometimes they get I get weird, weird about it, it. man. How do you I get feel- weird about it? I mean, I saw this one documentary where this guy's fucking a Volkswagen. You can do yeah. that to a train. You can run a train I mean, on a train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so these so these guys, uh, because of this guy could sell this for a lot of money. This picture, Kenny. Um, I mean, who else has a rail car conductor flipping off? Oh, the the yeah, picture. The picture. Yeah, that. I bet it's pretty rare, super rare. But yeah, he 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 was kind of pissed off because they were like taking pictures, and he was going to be in the picture. Bullshit. So yeah, they they had to apologize because that's know. that's Japan. Yeah, maybe he was all you know sad that his Tenga package hadn't arrived yet. Yeah, it was a little late. Tenga late. That was Burritos Nippo News. This is the rest of the fucking news. Judo Gene Level. What? Judo Gene Lebel confirms choking Steven Seagal until Steven Seagal <laughs> pooped himself. <laughs> Is this guy's name Judo Gene? Yeah, Judo so. Gene. Judo Gene. They call me Judo Gene. Uh, Judo Gene Lebel apparently sparred with Steven Seagal. And Steven Seagal was like, man, I could fuck you up. He's like, all right, bet. And he choked him out and Steven Seagal shitted himself. <laughs> like for Shack. real. I mean, you look at Steven Seagal, especially Steven Seagal now, and you're like, that's a dude who shit himself. I don't even think you need to choke him out. No, he'll just shit himself. He looks like he looks bloated now. (laughs) You know what I mean? I studied Aikido, and I am a a master of martial arts. That's how he talks. Sit your little sexy ass down. Maybe it was the first time in a long time that, that he shit himself. himself. Yeah, no, man. He'd no, this was back. This he was back in like the day. When, for ten years. This was back in the day when uh, Steven Seagal was Steven Seagal. Oh, yeah. I mean, like nobody cares if you choke out Steven Seagal right now. That oh, seems yeah. kind of mean. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was Steven Seagal is just. I was just mowing my lawn. Uh, <laughs> shit <an> himself. <laughs> Nashville lawyer suspended after posting advice on how to make murder look like self-defense. Bullshit. <laughs> I mean, don't they have like a TV series that's how to get like away with this? murder? Yeah, but like he's a lawyer, right? And uh, you're not supposed to give anything that could seem like advice unless oh, they're see. your client. And especially Wait, so that's the problem with it. The I think it's the covering up the murder part. I also feel like maybe he was doing it as like a thought piece. You know what I mean? Yeah. He wasn't necessarily like like saying, oh, I didn't read. And maybe he was saying that this is how exactly how to get away with murder. But like what I'm thinking happened is he's like, well, somebody asked. And hypothetically, if you do this and this, you would because of this, this and this. Just sounds like that a blog. Sounds like a like thought you can Google it. You know? you know what I mean? But now he got in trouble. So the real problem is Uh-oh. like if one of us said that. Right. Nobody cares. He wouldn't get in trouble. Right. The only reason he got in trouble was because he's a lawyer. He got in trouble by lawyer association, oh, okay, not okay. by like the law. Yeah. Okay. Still. Still. Woman demands family pay for second wedding because she didn't like the photos from her first. Punk, bitch. What do you think about this lady, burrito? Uh, <laughs> guy's gonna have a tough, tough couple tough years life. before he realizes. <laughs> You are a he made yeah, a mistake. like her husband. Nobody talks about that dude because that <laughs> dude's in the corner while his wife's getting fucked by seven dudes. How did this make the news? I don't know. <laughs> there are no do overs in real life. I know, I know. I don't know. I didn't read the story. I just it's a funny headline because it's like it this lady's funny. so unreasonable. She's making her family pay. And I mean, you can't make people pay for another wedding. Maybe she maybe demands. in the first photos. She looked like Bigfoot. Maybe. Oh, this is a second wedding to the same person. I think I just got that. Yeah, no, yeah, it's like yeah, a duo. Yeah. No, like, no, like, is... They're not getting, she's not like getting married again. Like, hey, no, this is like the same wedding. He's like, a month later, she got her photos back. She's like, bullshit. And the kid is. So everybody has to show up to this wedding again? And pay for everything. Wow. That's not cheap. No. Especially with this kind of demand. She didn't want that Craigslist photographer, you know? ISO photographer. Speaking of unruly bitches. Yeah, she might have had some big feet. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, feet. Oklahoma state lawmaker introduces a Bigfoot hunting season bill. 
So this measure Tackling would require the big licenses. issues. Yeah. And comes with a $25,000 reward for Bigfoot's capture. I don't really have a problem with this. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh all it you're doing is a little like, ridiculous. Well, all yeah. they're doing is just like, you know, I mean, they're kind yeah. of like bolstering the parks and recreation fees. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah. I think it's funny too. I mean, it's not funny if this guy actually believes it. That's not funny. <laughs> I feel like it's, it's less funny like if it's does, taking, though. taking up like taxpayer time to do this. You know what I mean? But yeah. if it generates like if revenue, it was, like, like if what? it was just like a, a marketing campaign, then that's something different. But this is like, he's like, no. This is real. Damn. Well, you have to make it real if you're a lawmaker, but I'm sure there's a comedic side to it. But it's also a money generator. Yeah. I see the good in it, but I feel like if this guy, like, really thinks that Bigfoot is out there and he's a threat to humanity, I think there's something bad about that. (laughs) Yeah. Bigfoot just won't be friends, man. I don't think he should be writing the laws, basically. (laughs) You don't believe Bigfoot's out there? (laughs) Yeah, I, I don't not believe he's out there, but, like, I'm not the one... Saying that we should go hunt him down, and here's twenty five thousand dollars because you killed Bigfoot. How much do yeah, you think exactly. this license like, is? I, I, I saw like Harry in the bucks. Hendersons. He yeah, seems real nice. I mean, realistically, Bigfoot's probably not nice, and he's probably like. But also, he never proven to kill anybody. You know what could not be nice? Honeybees. Mm. Eighteen wheeler carrying load of honeybees flips, causing road closure near downtown. Downtown. This is front page news, Slam City. Take us down this lane, Arthur. So our last story about a truck flipping was about a bunch of cheese balls. Cheese balls. Dude, that is high comedy. Brito, you were absent, but <laughs> we can talk about cheese balls again if you wanted to. But we talked about that in depth. Like cheesy poofs or yes. like cheese balls? No. Like Utz cheese balls. That you eat with crackers. No, no. Like cheesy poofs. Yeah. And what was it? Like five tons okay. of it or okay. something? It was something incredible. It was an 18-wheeler full of them incredible an entire 18 wheeler <laughs> and they weren't even in buckets or nothing they just put it straight the hop straight hopper of cheese balls into oh god the... no nah, i'm just joking about that <laughs> possibly no <laughs> no way man that you would don't be transport funny. fucking cheese balls like that you could Kinda just like transporting corn like fucking train cars with cheese yeah, balls yeah, yeah. you don't make that many cheese balls and also cheese balls the end product it's not like you know what I mean? <laughs> well, we're talking about honeybees here, guys. Yes, honeybees. So this is an 18 wheeler. This is hilarious, yeah, hilarious too. Honeybees. Also kind of sad because uh, uh, something about bees, you know? Something about bees dying in mass. Hey, you know. They're, yeah. They're Wait, so they died? They didn't just like fly away seat. and... I thought they flew away. I'm sure some of them died. I'm sure a lot of them died, dude. But they were dispersed. So it was like their case opened and then they flew everywhere. 20% probably died. So that's, yeah, that's sad. I wonder if they had the, the, if they had the queens with them. They could just make then maybe they they made it, but if they're just you know true, if the queen if they, dies, yeah, like if if they got the queens, or maybe if they have were transporting the queen separately, you know what I mean? Like and there's a bunch of worker bees, and they ain't got glass. They're case. not gonna make it. Where do you think these bees were going? To a bee farm. Yeah, I thought they were going to a honey. Like that honey, honey. A doughy flash <laughs> shut down halts Chinese railroad. For over 16 hours before a pirate copy restores operations. What is this, amateur hour? <laughs> so everybody knows, just so you know, if you don't know, Adobe Flash, uh, Flash in general, which used to be Macromedia, and then Adobe bought it, and then Adobe killed it and killed it for good. I think it was And this December is interactive. 31st. You make like interfaces and stuff with it. People yeah. make websites. Yeah. You can push buttons. Back in the day. But, I mean, like, but it exposed a lot of security flaws. So right. they're like, we're not going to keep up with this shit. Like Flash cartoons. Like Flash, Flash cartoons. cartoons. Yeah. Websites. Yeah. Interactive yeah. websites. Yeah. So I'm sure this uh, railroad operation software was just an interface that was written in Flash that requires like the Flash plugin, which was that big security flaw thing. Mm-hmm. And so when that got discontinued and then they stupidly probably updated their they systems. They probably <laughs> updated their systems. And now Flash doesn't work. Uh-oh. Now the front end doesn't work. Now they can't operate the railroad. And it took them 16 hours to get a pirated copy. You think China would be on that, though? They'd be like, oh, we got that in the... I would have saved an image. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's like that seems irresponsible that an entire... Railway wouldn't have like a proper backup cycle, or that it's not just in someone's drawer somewhere. 
Yeah. What is this? Avatar? It wasn't Hacker Lee's drawer. Hacker Lee. Fucking Hacker Lee. No, he saved the day. He had the pirated copy. Thank you, Hacker Lee. I'm sure that pirated copy was on a floppy disk. I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> it was on a thumb drive. And sad, dead ass news CeCe's Pizza is going the way of the Chuck E. Cheese's. No. CeCe's Pizza declares bankruptcy. CeCe's Pizza, a big part of childhood. True or false? True. Yeah, massive True. part of childhood, right? Let's talk about their uh, products for a little bit, guys. Yeah. So, dessert pizzas. Here's the yeah. tagline. Regular pizzas. Here's the tagline, guys. The best pizza value In under two ninety nine. Is that what it was? Yeah, they would say two ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Do two dollars and ninety nine cents for pizza buffet? All you can eat. Yeah. All you it's can ridiculous. eat for only two ninety nine. That seems insanity. It seems irresponsible. It does, but man, if we didn't go all the fucking time, you know, anytime <laughs> we played a, a sporting event. Hell yeah. Anytime we did math stuff. Where else yeah. are our soccer teams and baseball teams and little leagues? Yeah. And I mean, math yeah, leagues. Seriously, those were like like two ninety nine. You just slip your kid a five five bucks and they can go eat with their friends. You know, that's like yeah, nothing. That's true. Plus a drink. Yeah, it used to be included. Yeah. You you always gotta save room for those dessert pizzas. What's your favorite one? Ooh. I guess the one that had like the, the chocolate. chocolate drizzle on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the cinnamon the one little was square kind of ones were pretty good too. Yeah. yeah, almost like baklava. Yeah, yeah. Um, the apple pizza, like apple pie pizza. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, everything, everything was probably like a solid five or six at CC's Pizza. They it don't got edible. boba balls in their fucking. They didn't. That's crust. why they're going fucking bankrupt. They didn't put boba balls in there. You got to evolve, man. You got to keep up with the Gen Z, man. Gen Z loves boba balls and they love K-pop, so make it happen. This looks like a marketing story, though, because I don't think CC's is going away. It's just declaring bankruptcy and selling itself to someone else. When things go bankrupt, they don't always go away. Right. Chuck E. Cheese is still around. Yeah. Maybe we need to buy stock. (laughs) Yes. Stocks and (laughs) CC's pizza. Let's make that shit blow up. I'm into it. Let's make everything that sucks blow up. <laughs> How about this new gr- coronavirus test, guys? Yeah. China rolls out anal swab coronavirus test, saying it's more accurate than throat method. Bro, not huh. only is it more accurate, it's four degrees warmer. Dynamite! Dynamite! Can you imagine the drive through uh, <laughs> coronavirus? <laughs> All right, now stick your ass up. Yeah, and they just like swipe, they just like wipe your ass a little yeah. bit. <laughs> that sucks, dude. Wasn't the. Nose swab like ninety seven percent accurate. Yeah, it's pretty. Why do we need good. the extra two percent if you got to put it in my butt? I'm I'm willing to take the chance on three <laughs> percent. You ain't gotta put it in my butt, China. No, no, we we do we do. Okay, well, all right. We gonna. <laughs> yeah, we don't have. Yeah, exactly. We don't have to, but we are. <laughs> That's like China's tagline. We don't have to, but we will. It's like God's <laughs> vagina. And finally, woman performs sex act on thief during petrol station raid in Slovakia. You are a smelly <laughs> pirate hooker. I didn't so read words in this headline. I know. <laughs> I, I only read the headline because then my mind exploded. <laughs> so what I'm thinking happened is this dude's like robbing a petrol station. And this lady's like, hey, I saw you just grabbed 20 bucks from the register. Why don't I give you a blowjob? Oh, and the guy's like. That makes so much sense. Let's do that. I think I have a few minutes before the cops get here. So, like, <laughs> you know, right outside the door, you're getting, he's getting filleted, and the dude's just, like, hitting the panic button and inside. Like, he already got robbed. Now he's just watching the camera of this dude getting fucking blown. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I got time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here in Slovakia, you know, shit's a little slow when it comes to the cops, so... And I mean, if you're 24 years old, would you pass up that opportunity after you robbed a bank? I mean, you probably have a fucking like a boner the size of God from all the adrenaline. And you might trip on it. You might trip on it. You might as well let some lady fillet you. A 24. Oh, it it led to his his, uh, arrest, apparently. (laughs) Wait. Okay. Now that I'm reading the rest of that story, it sounds like she was trying to be like. Hold on. Like the hero? Yeah, she was like detaining him for the cops. 
A 24-year-old Serb was arrested at a petrol station near Bratislava on Tuesday after police say he tried to rob it, but was stopped from leaving by a Czech woman performing a sex act on him. Is she a hero? And is she the hero we all need? <laughs> Not what all would heroes her superhero name be? What would her superhero name be? The Human Vacuum. The Human Vacuum. That's like a, it feels like a 40s, 1940s mm. yeah. superhero. I'm the Human Vacuum. Sounds like a dude, well, too. Golden Age? Yeah. Femme Filet <laughs> Yes. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Femme filet towel. She'll stop you in, in your tracks. But I don't want a blowjob. Yes, you do. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, I really, I really gotta gotta go. No, you don't. Nope, I don't. <laughs> Is that a reenactment? <laughs> yeah, that was. All right, I'm the cashier at this petrol station. I'm about to be robbed. Hey, uh, man, Gemini I'm Jackson robbing you. Is a 24 year old Serb. I'm a 24 year old Serbian, and I'm yeah. robbing you right fucking now. And Give me all your money. Is Give the me Czech all your woman money. known as the the Femme Femme Filet Tal. But this uh, Ex- excuse of- me, um, I what would do you like want? to. Oh, you I see all this to, money uh, I got? You've got something on your pants. Let me get it for you. Oh, what is yes. this? Oh, well, well, then might as well. I already got this fucking oh. adrenaline boner. Hey, why don't you slob on this? Why don't you slob on this? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably slob? a slur. <laughs> we need to look that up. <laughs> why don't you slob on this? Yeah, it probably is. I think it's a slur. <laughs> Oh no, it's the cops. I'm getting arrested. And if, if, I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for all these blowjobs. With this meddling mouth. <laughs> this meddling, that's her name, the meddling mouth. <laughs> Madeline, the mar- meddling mouth. <laughs> She's yeah. like a tw- 1920s flapper. Yeah, her real name is Madeline Mouth. <laughs> Madeline Mouth. <laughs> AKA the Femme Filet Towel. <laughs> the Femme Filet Towel. I like the meddling mouth too. That one's pretty good, dude. <laughs> I bet you didn't even finish. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> oh. He, he just got the boys in blue bald. You get it? The boys in blue bald. Okay, that's a lot. That was the news. <laughs> Food truck fanboys, you haven't lived until you've conquered the crazy one. Intergalactic Boba Runner Booba Gets serves you everything, everything in the crazy one. Infinite calories for a not so infinite price. Best spring your appetite because the crazy one has everything. everything. No substitutions. No. no. Don't give up your much earned cred by asking for no pickles or no onions. Booba won't hold the mayo because it wouldn't be the crazy one if it didn't have everything. everything. Next time you have a craving for clout that will get your feet wet, find the most badass food truck in the galaxy and order the crazy one from Booba Get. I'm a gets, and I gets it. So get it. Oh, what a half lunch. I'll go first because mine's quick, and it was the same thing I had last week, and I choked on it, but not this week. You had dick Ooh. this week, too? Ramen? Oh, man. Yeah, it was ramen. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because we mentioned this earlier. Yeah. This is shin ramen, so does Uh-oh. that mean death ramen? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it's, like, hot. Is that what that... What, Oh, it's okay. spicy. That's what they mean? Is, yeah. I did not shin. know that. Didn't, didn't click in my head. Yeah. Or maybe evil. Is Shin specifically death? Yeah, All I right. think so. All right. Or is it like, I thought Shin Robin was like Korean. No, man. It is. <laughs> it is. It right? is Korean? It probably means yeah. something So different. maybe it means something completely different, dude. Oh, so it's not Why that Why do you like this? <laughs> you need to sit your little sexy ass down. All right, who's next? <laughs> All right. Boom Chi. Cheesy. Boom Chi. Boom Cheesy. Pizza? Boom Cheesy? Boom Chi. Yeah, Boom Chi. Hey, it's brand new to me. I mean, I've had it before, but it's brand new to me. Brand new to you. Yeah. I've had it before, but it's brand new to me. You probably don't understand that one, Burrito. And Boom Chi, it's like a sandwich, but it's not. But it is. Is it a torta? It's not a torta. Mm. It's like a, it's a sandwich, right? Straight up, but we don't call it that because it's circular. The gordita? No. And it was cheesy. Yeah, yeah, I'm eating it. A calzone? No. 
It also had like Thousand Island dressing. A Reuben? No. What? It's not a, a sandwich. Mufaleta? It's not a sandwich. But it is a sandwich. Like Oh, you said it was a sandwich. It's not a sandwich. Like we don't call it a sandwich. We call it something else. Mm. Something from Germany. A panini? Oh. No, that's French. <laughs> a bratwurst? No. <laughs> a hot dog? No. <laughs> it's got bread. It's got meat. It's Schnitzel. Got, it's got cheese on it. Kalachi. It's got Thousand Island Klobos, dressing on Klobos it. Thinks. It got onions. Oh. It got lettuce, sometimes pickles. Mayonnaise, yeah, I have no idea. mustard. The name's just tomatoes, not coming to me. Hamburger. Oh, a hamburger. A hamburger. Oh. I had a Humbled. hamburger. I had a, a hamburger. I had a hamburger. You made it a lot more difficult. I than- did, but I mean, <laughs> I thought sometimes that's the like that's the game. You do that German zinger in there, and I was like, uh, I mean, it's a hamburger. It's remember. German. From where? It's new to me, but I've had it before. <laughs> but it's new to me because I can get it easy. In and out. Close. It's like kind of the same, but like P. Terry's. Yes. Dynamite. There's a new one around the corner. Those are sprouting up all over Slam City. I know, and I'm happy you have it. There's going to be a new one in Slam City South soon. Uh oh. I heard. Have you had it? I've had it in Slam City proper. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. But not the ones, not the one in Slam City South. Do you customize it in any certain way? Uh, I add onions. Grilled onions? No, just the onions. Sometimes I just want the freshness, you know? Like sometimes when you get too many grilled things, it's all like just like the same taste, just oil. (laughs) You know, just char. Yeah, and sometimes you want like you want texture. You want and you had the special bite, sauce on there. The special sauce, the Thousand Island dressing. A thousand. Thousand Island. Did you dressing. get a shake? I did. How did you know? What flavor? Neapolitan. Nope. That would be gross, man. <laughs> you get Neapolitan <laughs> shakes from In and Out. That's a secret menu item. Uh oh. True. Yeah. Sweet. They just layer it. Wow. It kind of all bleeds together when it melts. Sure. But... Yeah. I have one of the flavors in Neapolitan. <laughs> Strawberry. Hey, look at you. Yeah. Obviously nice. the best flavor of shake in the Neapolitan universe. How about Oreo cookie? That's pretty good. That's not in the Neapolitan universe. Have you had Neapolitan Oreo? Nope. I made that up. I know you did. It's not in the universe, man. <laughs> That's not canon. All right, Burrito. Did you have Quiznos yet? I did. I have not. They did think you have you're Taco dead. Cabana they or Domino's? They literally think you're dead, I dude. didn't. I had something completely different that I've never talked about in the show. Oh. That's Boomchi. Wait, Boomchi, yeah. it's uh, Taiwanese. No. Okay. Boomchi, it was Japanese. Oh. Boomchi, I picked it up at the grocery store. And Boomchi. Boomchi. Sushi. Huh? Sushi. Close. Boomchi, there was salad involved. Oh, did you get a bento box from like H-E-B or something? Kind of. It was, you know, like a, there's a specific name for it. It starts with a P. Pussy. Pussy. <laughs> Monkey's um, out of the bottle, man. Like God's vagina. P. It's got a, a concave shape to the vessel that it's in. Concave shape. A panini. Or a convex shape. The vessel is. It's a ball. Bowl, yes. Oh. You could just say bowl. Bowl shape. Oh, yeah. poke bowl. Oh, yeah, poke bowl. Oh, nice. Is that Japanese? I, I thought it was Hawaiian. It is Hawaiian. Uh, I guess it is Hawaiian. It yeah. is Hawaiian. See, you guys Hawaiian. in these nationalities Sexy throwing me up. I'm sorry. It's like, all right, Shin is Korean. I get it. Are you talking about how hamburgers are German? <laughs> Not the hamburger say. you had, man. That's I all didn't American. Say. What does Eric America have to say about that? Oh, Eric America you know, says, hey, you know what it was? It was because I picked it up at the sushi. I got you, man. It's cool. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the ingredients are there. They're going to put it together. Yeah. Okay, so sushi experience versus like... A poke know, experience? Yeah, it's like it's 80, 90% of the same experience. Not all saladed up like a poke yeah. bowl, though. How was it, though? It was pretty good. Was I got the, the one with tuna because I'm not a fan of... Salmon when it's been sitting. Salmon, yeah. Although I, I did go get the groceries in the morning and then I ate it right after, so... It had not been sitting that long. They make those things at like 7 in the morning. Yeah. It's got the time on it, actually. Yeah, it Mine does. was made at 7.49, and I ate it at 11 o'clock. So. Not bad. 
Yeah. It was refrigerated. It was in the proper temperatures for most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. But it was expensive too, right? I think I don't get those. Ten bucks. They're expensive. Like Ten ninety nine. I think it was. Treat yeah. yourself. Why not? Be it, good to yourself. It's been a long now. time since I had any kind of raw fish, so I was like, you know what? Maybe it's time I had some raw fish. Did you eat it all in one yeah. sitting? I did. Wow. So it must have been a small portion, man. Yeah, for you to eat it in one sitting. Well, I mean, I feel like you was just hungry. Those are just easy to eat. So all tasty. Of it. it doesn't it's weigh so you down. Tasty. Like as like a pizza would. Yeah. You don't get heavy. And I actually it. looked too, because I was like, I wonder how many servings this is. And it says one serving. So it's like 340 calories. It That's wasn't like a lot. Nothing. That's 11 bucks. You're not yeah. really getting some bang That's for your poor buck, man. That's a calorie to dollar ratio. Yeah. You need to sit your little sexy ass down. Yeah. I buy in bulk. You're an asshole. Hey, but it's been forever and you never brought it up on the show. So yeah, you no, don't hey. have this all the time. Exactly. No, this is, it's right. a, I was satisfied yourself. though. Hey. Yeah. Like that Tenga pocket pussy left him satisfied. <laughs> that was what I had for lunch. This is Erica's America's Learning Kona. All right, so uh, the tree legged plastic table. The tree legged plastic table. And hey, Dr. Smart Man, <laughs> do you know what that thing's called? It's called a pizza saver, Eric America. That's right. Uh, did you know that it was invented in 1974? I did not know that. Yeah, me neither. I didn't even know what the fuck it was called. Actually, back in the day when I was in the pizza biz, we had a different name for these things. We called them Barbie tables. Barbie tables. Now, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, because they were just a little dollhouse-looking table thing, and you just put them in the middle of the pizza, so whenever the box gets smashed, it doesn't smash onto the pizza. I bent to Barbie over a table one time. <laughs> <laughs> You need to sit your little sexy ass down. Godzilla, do you want to take this one burrito and then I commentate on top of it? Uh, sure. So Godzilla was originally created as a metaphor for the relationship between humans and nuclear weapons. Nucula. Its skin is not based on what? Nucula. Nuclear Sorry. weapons. I did pronounce that incorrectly. True. Nuclear. Oh, <laughs> Monkeys out of the bottle, man. Godzilla's skin is not based on reptile scales. Do you know what it's based on? I do not, but that sounds like it's terrible. <laughs> it's based on the burn wounds found Jesus. on the survivors of the Hiroshima bombings. Jesus fucking Christ. That's deep, man. That seems yeah. like, hey, is that true? Is that true? Yeah, do you believe this? Yeah. Is that true? That's true. That's pretty heavy. There's a name for those people. It's the, the Hibakusha, I believe. What's that mean in, like, American? I don't know. Transliterate it for me, Dr. Smart Man. <laughs> Hibashima. I will, I will Hibashima. check the Google Translate. It means cooked alive. <laughs> I mean, hibachi, right? Sit your little sexy ass down. I bet there's a root word there. Probably. Oops. Hibakusha. Oh. I don't know because it just says a bomb survivors. A bomb survivors. Okay, that's a it's pretty dour. This uh this thing that we learned that uh, the scales of Godzilla is actually burnt wounds from when America kicked their ass. I feel kind of bad about it, but then again, we kind of kicked their ass. How bad could you feel about it, Eric America? <laughs> that's my tagline. How bad could you possibly feel about it, Eric America? Back to back World War champs. <laughs> What else did you learn, Eric America? Well, let's see. That a band released a playable record made out of ice. Jesus Christ. Oh. I mean, you can make a friggin' record out of anything. I made it out of a slice of pizza one time. Do you believe me? Like Skeeter Valentine? When oh, he was a DJ he? in that, in that oh, party? Oh, yeah. That's pretty funny. And I'm sure there's been vinyl that was printed like a pizza. I mean, that seems there's like an a, obvious thing. There's like the, the people who make it out of wood, like the wood engravings. Oh. Funny thing with a record made of ice, though, is you could only really play it once unless you were in like a freezer trying to play it. I mean, you just like play it outside in, in Norway. You'll be yeah. fine. At the North Pole. It was probably death metal. It was actually a band made record. Oh, really? No. Nah. That's a fucking legit record. Damn. Bullshit! <laughs> How do you think they made it? Do you think they actually etched it or did they just cast the ice? Well, it's like vinyl. You just press it. You think they just pressed it into like the yeah. mold? Probably. That seems dumb then. Why do we even talk about this one? Hey, uh, Dr. Smart Man, tell me a little bit about this ice record. Like, was it, uh, was it an involved process? Was it, uh... No idea. Just no that idea. it was done before. 
Okay, well, thanks for that. Uh, that was uh, Eric America's Learning Corner. I'll see you next week. I'll friggin' see you maybe next time. When your hair's all messed up and you look like shit, there's a solution for you. Blow and go. State Alliance, Solid State Technology. Source with the bestest Japanese to the technology to create the best hair dryer in the world. Shit. Even the universe. Ten levels of blow with two fucking true hyperdrives. It's the apex of the vortex. The tsunami mommy. Oh, you can read up on the advanced features of blow and go on your own time. But now, just blow and go. That's all you need to know. Every major department store that's worth shit. And gas stations. And bodegas got them. Everyone's entitled to the truth. Follow us on Twitter at Instagram at Slam City Radio. Get in touch with us through our contact form at slamcityradio.com. We'll send you a sticker that asks you Royal Stick It. Subscribe, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play all day, every day. Every day. Scram! I said split! And now! Oh shit. Was that too much? Hit him up!